Alright guys, we're back. Um, we're back. Just dropped Pretty Girl off at school. Uh, I've got a few things I'm going to get done today. We have had uh, a few issues that... Uh, because I was so sick, and I'm still a little off. I mean, I'm not bad, but I'm a little off. So, because of the fact I've been so sick, and because of the fact that I'm now getting my strength back, we got to get some things caught up. Uh, the last thing we did, we dropped off the wood chipper because the belt broke, and the lawnmower because, well, the lawnmower had a problem. <clears throat> now, the guy replaced the belt and had to replace the engine in the lawnmower. We need to go get them and get back to work. We stopped here to pick up the equipment. Got a new motor on the lawnmower, got a new belt in the chipper and we're getting ready to get going here. Uh, the, he's got the throttle set too low on that lawnmower, so he's adjusting it now to bring the throttle up. It has been a little more than a year since we planted this food forest, so we're gonna take a few minutes and do a quick walkthrough. Now, technically, this avocado pear is not in the section we planted last year. In fact, we just planted this pear a few weeks ago. But our first protective measure is to protect this pear. Once this pear is big enough that it's over the top of this, this fencing, it'll survive the goats. But we need to protect it from the goats. And right here, we've got this lemon drop mango steam. This thing has been a victim of multiple problems. First off, it did not have mulch for a very long time, so it never grew. Then, as soon as it grew, the goats came and feasted. And it's, it's coming back. It continues to grow, so as long as it grows, I'm happy. We're going to get some fencing around this one, too. You see the comfrey behind it? I'm getting ready to dig this stuff up and replace, plant it out. Um, it's growing so big, these are so big, it's time to pull them and see if we can get them to spread. Now, right next to this lemon drop mangosteen, we've got this papaya. And uh, this is a good, healthy looking papaya. It's one of the three. We have three papayas that look good. The rest of them, eh, not so much. But these three, they look good. So we're trying to get seeds from this papaya and the other ones to plant in for the next generation. One of the things that's been a great success so far are these guavas. We've had a couple guava fruits already and they're really pretty good. And in fact, take a look. There's one already. There's another guava for you. So we've got several guavas coming up here. And uh, this one is another really good looking. Now we've got some issues. If you look at some of the leaves, they got a lot of black and brown. I don't know exactly what this is, but we've got a lot of new growth that's healthy and beautiful. So again, since we're all natural, we don't do anything. If it dies, it dies. We're hoping that it will organically fight whatever it is it's got. Perhaps the biggest victim to the goats and the cows is this cashew. This poor cashew continues to try and get off its feet and every time it gets a little bit up the goats come and they chop it down to the ground. I have faith that this thing will come back. We're gonna get some fencing around this next. This is the next tree we're gonna protect and hopefully a little protection will stop the animals from destroying them. Now we have just recently cut down most of the pigeon pea and uh, we're putting we're letting some of the pigeon peas stay and go to seed so we have seed for next time but most of it has been cut down. We cut it down we mulched it in now we're getting a look at what needs to be done. Is, this was a thick layer of mulch and if you look we've got spots here where we've got exposed ground so we need we, we need to increase our mulch layer. It's 
one of the reasons we have the lawnmower here to make sure we get a good mulch layer in. Now this here is a star fruit tree. This star fruit is the bigger of the two. We have two of these on this in this food forest. This is a better looking one, but they're both doing pretty good. They don't really like the super, super hot. They don't do all that well and it's really hot, but they do all right and they survive. When we get the cooler weather, like what we're having right now, they do much better and they're holding up pretty well. Right next to it, we've got this pomegranate. This pomegranate, we're getting fruit. You take a look, we got fruit here and fruit here. It's nice. Uh, in the last few months, we've really ignored this section because we were so focused on planting out the timber. But now that the timber's in the ground, we're focused here. here this is a naysberry, also a um, sepadilla, the brown sugar fruit. Um, it looks fantastic. Comparatively, it is, it's significantly larger than it was last year. It has not been watered, not been cared for. It's actually been completely neglected. The only water this tree gets comes from the swale behind it. And it looks nice. Now next to that, we've got this papaya, which is another one of our good looking papayas. And then on the other side, it's got this one, which is a mess. In fact, I don't know why we didn't cut this thing down. I thought it was dead. But right next to it is another guava. Now remember, the guavas look really, some of these guavas look really good. Not all of them. Most of them do, though. And they're looking beautiful. But we still have this brown, this black something on the leaves. I don't know what the hell that is. Obviously, we've got an infestation of some sort. I really need to bring some chickens in here. As soon as I have chickens, then we'll worry about it. But until then, we just kind of have to let them see what they do. I might come in here. Someone said come in with a little soap and water spray to clean the leaves off. That might help. I might do some of that because these are seriously showing some signs. And we don't want to just abandon them. But... We do want these guavas to do well. On the back of these leaves, I'm seeing a bunch of ants. So I'm wondering if this is like aphids, where the ants bring the aphids. And take a look, we've got wasps that are coming and feeding. So hopefully, maybe, maybe the wasps are what we need to finish this. But if I had some chickens, the chickens would scratch out the ants and take care of that. So I really need to get some chickens. Now this pink grapefruit was in the shadow of this monster pigeon pea. Now this thing's starting to come back. We need to cut it so it doesn't. And this pink grapefruit is going to start to take over this spot. Uh, it looks pretty good. There's a lot of new growth. A lot of new growth here on the tips. It's looking nice. So, I, I this is one of the bigger, this thing's grown significantly in the last year. Now, here is our second star fruit. As you see, it's significantly smaller than the other one, but it is growing and it's healthy. Just giving it time. Again, we, we haven't paid any attention to this stuff. And things are still doing pretty well, mostly, for the most part. As an example of something looking pretty rough, here's one of the oranges. And these oranges, man, the goats love these things. So what happens? The goats roll through here, they chow down on the oranges. They destroy these trees. But it keeps coming back. I'm just hoping to get some fencing around this to protect it enough for it to get big enough to survive the goats. Now this here is another orange tree. Same situation. The goats love it. <clears throat> we need to get some fencing around it to protect it from the goats. But these goats are de just devouring these trees. And they keep coming back, but I just think to myself, what would these trees be like if the goats hadn't destroyed them so many times over the last year? This guava was planted the same time as those other ones I showed you. Look at how much smaller it is. 
Now it's on the edge of the mulch. It's also farthest away from the swale, so that might have something to do with it as well. But it is here, and it's healthy. It's just not as big. We've got this guava, and we've got this pomegranate. Both of them, they look pretty good, actually. Uh, there's no fruit on this pomegranate, but... Again, this is at the very edge of this, the mulch and farthest from the swale. I'm hoping that as this continues to grow, as this system grows and as the mulch layer builds, we'll continue to increase the water table and these trees further away are going to do better. This is where all those branches from the pigeon pea or the gunga pea that we had growing here, this is where they were. So we chipped all those up, we're going to rake them out and give us the mulch layer, increase the mulch layer. As you see, right here, we've got a pineapple growing. Here we need to plant some more things. We're kind of a little bit barren in this spot. So we're going to get in here. We're going to get a few more things in the ground. Now, a couple weeks ago, three, yeah, more than a few weeks ago, we came in here and pulled all the sweet potato vines up. And if you look, all of this new sweet potato coming up, this is all stuff that was in the ground before. It's just springing back. That's fine. We want that to take over and give us a good ground cover again. This right here is one of my favorite fruits. This is a star apple. And it has remained surprisingly unharmed by the animals. Growing healthy. It's getting much bigger. It's got a good solid root system then. And we should see this start to take off soon. It's shown a significant amount of growth in the last three months. I have a feeling the next year we're going to see this thing get really good sized. It's a nice looking tree. This is one of my favorites. Right here amongst all this, we got these, this papaya here and these papayas here. And this pigeon pea. A gunga pea, we have a jackfruit. Now this is a nice looking jackfruit tree. It took a while for this jackfruit to start growing. Kind of went through a serious transplant shock, but in the last three, four months or so, it's shown significant health, significant vigor. It's survived the goats. The animals really don't seem to bother it that much. And it's getting pretty big. So this is a good success story. Happy with this. Right down here next to it, we've got some leukina growing. I've got more of this leukina growing throughout the place. Hopefully, in a couple months, we'll cut and chop all of that, and it'll root prune and give us more nitrogen in the soil. Anchoring this food forest, we have this banana circle. And this banana circle has seen better days. It went through quite a bit of abuse when the uh, road was put in to put in the floodgate. They did quite a bit of damage here. And then the cows, for some reason, the cows just love to destroy these bananas. I don't know why. So, it's suffering. But we do have bananas, so it's not a complete waste. And here, take a look at this, we've got this beautiful papaya, filled with fruit. Nice, fat, healthy papayas. So I'm, I'm a little bit upset with a lot of the results here, but without living on the site, it's difficult. The, my neighbors don't care, they leave their animals to do anything, and, and it's a problem. Now well, guys, that's, we just took a quick walk through the food forest. It's kind of disappointing. To be honest, I'm a little disappointed. The amount of damage done by the local animals is just shocking. Uh, you know, I don't know. I come from where I come from. Nobody leaves it, lets their livestock roam wild. And if you were to destroy someone else's crops, you'd have to pay for it. But here, then nah, nobody cares. So I've got to figure out how to deal with that. But uh, 
that's it for now. We're going to sign off and uh, head out. Um, you know, it's been a difficult day. I'm not, I'm still, still a little bit weak. I'm still a little bit tired. So there's, there's a limit to what I'm going to do. But I uh, wanted to give you guys a look. It's been a year. We've got some good results, we got some mediocre results, we got some sad results. Hopefully, next year will be better. <laughs> <laughs>